security stood in front of the door while the owner of this club violated me in his office. And when he was finished, he handed me like a wad. It was like a hundred dollars. It's Miss Tiffany B. B, B, B. Not the two of the three. I'm the one. The one. And if you don't know, what well, you're about to find out. Tell him about me, Coley. Coley. I got you, sis. The baddest to ever do it, the baddest to get it done. Yep. Thinking life's a deuce, Miss B, she's number one, big money. So best believe everything big. Okay. You see her walk in the spot, just know everything lit. Okay. Going diva shit, making heads turn like who she leaving with. The baddest, have you seen her? Yeah, she do this, please believe her, you could never. Nah. It would take a lot to get to that level. Tiffany B, big boss, and she never gonna settle. No. Tiffany, that's me. It's Miss B. And you can't forget the B for the baddest. You can't. Money ain't a thing, it's whatever to her. And she love a cheetah prank cause she a savage. Okay. Classy little mama walking tall up in the hills. Yep. A real head turn them and be all up in her grill. Yep. Turn the cause down, she got them all up in their fields. Pretty privilege, it's so real because they paying all her bills. Ah. <laughs> the, the girls, girls that, that get, get it, it, get, get it. it. another vlog. Today we are going to be doing a stripper vlog and I know a lot of you guys feel like I'm someone who glamorizes working in the nightlife, working in the strip club. So in this vlog I wanted to strictly focus on the dark sides of the strip club, the negative. I wear my hair out in the club all the time all the time and a lot of girls ask me you know tiffany how do you wear your hair in the club does it impact your money does it affect your money and honestly yeah it does it makes it go up you want to know why because i'm comfortable in my natural hair listen i work here in nashville tennessee guys in tennessee and i'm going to work in the strip club with an afro in the kinkiest form. This is my hair in the kinkiest form. This is my hair where my curls are dehydrated and they're not as defined, but I still love it and I'm still gonna rock it and can't nobody tell me different. And in my opinion, it helps me make money. I'm comfortable with my hair. It don't matter if I put on a blonde wig, it don't matter if I got my fro on. If I like the hairstyle that I got, we gonna make some money with it regardless because I'm not doing this for other people. I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing my hair like this to please other people. I'm doing it because it makes me happy because I feel beautiful in it. Because I love to, when I'm dancing, I love to be able to move my head around and know that I'm free. If you're a black woman, you're gonna face discrimination. We get discriminated against in every field. So it's either you're gonna stand in your shit, own your shit, or you're going to let these people take advantage of you and walk all over you. We're not doing that. So you really just have to learn how to just stand in your blackness, accept your blackness for what it is. You love your hair, you love your skin, and that's all that matters. It don't matter what anyone else has to say. But I'm telling you, people see me. I feel like if you see a black woman in public walking confidently, she's, you know, beautiful, she's done up, you can do nothing but respect her. She's rocking her crown. You can't do nothing but respect it. But it does happen. And I've been in situations um, in the North primarily where, you know, I've had guys say things like, oh, I don't like black girls, blah, 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 things like that. Well, you're fucking lost. That has nothing to do with me because I like me. So I, I could care less whether or not you like me. And it usually comes from people who look like me. So now you just tell me you don't like yourself and I would hate to be you. But yeah, we're going to just head on over to work, guys. I do need to get on going, y'all. I haven't been to work in about two, three weeks. Okay, guys? It's time for me to make some money, and then I got to catch a flight in the morning. So let's go. Pick my outfit. In Tennessee, get ten dollar admission with your ten. Yo, 
y'all, why did one of the girls just bless me with some food? Your favorite entertainer. Grab a seven minute VIP one of their 20 newly remodeled VIP rooms for just 45 bucks. So I got the macaroni and the pineapple ham. She said this is the first time that she ever made fresh greens and when I tell y'all, I know this shit gonna taste good. I'm a greedy ass bitch and the girls in the club know that. Whoa! Hey, I'm back home. All right, so tonight was cool. Went to work, enjoyed myself. I haven't been to work in a week, so it was nice to be able to go in and for the night to be moving, okay? But I do want to talk about something that ugh, I wish I never had to touch on ever again. It is abuse for management. And the stories that I give you guys are all stories from New York. Okay? The strip club is an easy place for you to set yourself up. Okay? You don't just have to look out for other dancers, you know, stealing from you or customers being weird and doing weird things. You also have to look out for management. Okay? Have you ever applied for a job when you were younger and they would say that a lot of the loss from the company, like a lot of theft, comes from people who actually work for the company. Yeah, a lot of the evil, a lot of the negativity comes from people who work in the company. I'm just gonna start with my New York story. So when I was working in New York, when I started off, when I had my home club, I was working for the same person. And every time this person would open up a new club, cause for some reason, like his clubs were always targeted and you know, they would get shut down a lot, but Every time he would open up a new club, I would work at his club because I felt super comfortable with this person. You know, that was my home club. That's where I always was all the time. I wasn't in the big clubs with the big names and they got the celebrities coming in every weekend and shit. I never worked at spots like that in New York. I worked at the hole in the walls where it felt like family, right? But there were periods where this club would get shut down, so I would have to, um, you know, steer away. I'm gonna give you guys a couple tough stories. This is really hard. So I was working at a club in Jersey, right? You know, I'm on the floor and I hear the DJ call my name. And he says, you know, to report to the manager's office. So I report to the manager's office and I go into the office, security immediately locks the door, stands in front of it. Fucking shit, this is a lot. This is actually really a lot. Security stood in front of the door while the owner of this club violated me in his office. And when he was finished, he handed me like a wad. It was like $100. And I remember getting upset about it. And as I was storming out the place, the security guard said, who, who are they gonna believe? You, like a stripper hoe, or the boss? Who, what side are the cops gonna be? That's a story in itself, and I've also been in situations where um, I've had a girl call me on the phone crying because management forced her to perform a task on a customer because he paid for a private room <gasps> and if she didn't do it she would lose her job and blah blah you gotta pay out whatever the customer you know was charged for the room um and i've also worked at clubs where i walked in on girls performing tasks and i also sometimes the managers would have their friends their big spender friends come into the club and you know they're treated a certain way they're given the private rooms and you might have someone waiting outside the room with a towel that's why when you guys would see my older videos i would always say oh yeah i'm never working in a club that has a private room because you go to certain states the private room has no rules in certain states okay i feel comfortable enough now to work in the club that has private rooms because I feel protected by staff. I don't feel like the staff is encouraging anything that 
we don't want duck to us, okay? Um, but there are clubs like that. You will meet staff members that are predators, straight up predators, okay? Um, everybody's in cahoots with one another. You just can't really trust people in this game. It's hard to find a club that you love, but once you find a place where you feel accepted, where you feel protected, stick with it. Even if you have moments in that club where it's slow, every spot will have their slow season. Every city will have a slow season, okay? But if you find a club where the managers respect you, the staff respects you, the dancers respect you, stick with it, no matter what, okay? Because that's the spot you wanna be at. You don't ever wanna be in a situation where you're uncomfortable, or someone's taking advantage of you, okay? You just really have to make sure you're protected in the Hey girl, hey! Welcome, okay, y'all. We are in New York. Woo woo! All right, so I've been in New York for a couple days now. I went to work um, the last time I spoke to you guys. Oh my gosh. I, did y'all have to see that super little bitch cut through the lanes? I mean, I would do the same thing if I had a motorcycle, so let me stop playing. But um, the last time you guys seen me, I went to work. I had that conversation with you guys about, you know, abuse from management. It was just a lot. Um, but right now, we are in New York. I came here a couple of days ago, my cousin's college graduation party. And um, Dave's birthday also passed, but I wasn't able to make it to his actual birthday dinner. So um, I am going to take him out today. That's what we are doing. And then I fly back to Nashville uh, early as fuck in the morning. I'm a first flight out type girl. I don't do the late flights. Dave right now is doing a podcast. Um, I'm meeting him in Brooklyn, but yo, it's hella traffic. And I'm just so confused. Like, I thought school was out. Where, where y'all going? Where these motherfuckers going? Is everybody going to a podcast? Is everybody going to eat with their friends? But yo, yo, listen to this. So I went to fucking um, Manhattan yesterday, right? Manhattan, it was yesterday. Um, Pride. The Pride Parade was yesterday. So today's July 1st. Happy July 1st. Um, the Pride Parade was yesterday, right? I went to Manhattan at night and I was in the area where they got like a lot of gay bars. Why were people throwing stuff from the rooftops, bitch? They were throwing ice cream, they were throwing glass, and it's crazy because that same thing happened with some uh, dude throwing like uh, uh, fucking cement blocks off of the rooftop in New York City the other day. Like, what is going on with motherfuckers? Don't don't make this become a thing. What is going on? I have this empty room in my, in my apartment. Why not turn it into a studio where I can do makeup? Um, but then I'm also too like when it comes to like booking me and doing makeup, I'm very selective about the people that I in, like interact with. And because you got to think about, it. I'm spending an hour and thirty minutes yes. in someone's face in their personal space and we're talking we're having a conversation sometimes they leave you with all that whatever they've been going mm -hmm. through for the day so i'm very selective about the people that i do makeup on in the first place so i think what better than to so have everybody can't home. just book you no that's why i don't have a booking site you literally have to dm go through me. You, okay. yeah you have to go through me because i get on the phone with you we chit chat for a little bit i don't want to do something i love and be stressed about it in the same moment. So if I feel like you're going to stress me out or you're going to make me feel uncomffortable while doing your makeup, I won't do it. So all money ain't good. Hey, go hey, Guess who just got added to the podcast? Yeah. Are you ready to hear Miss B talk? Yeah. It's funny. Everyone always says that I should start a podcast, but I'm like... Just add me to your yeah, podcast. We I got other things to do. We should do that. We yeah, should just uh -huh. go pop up on people's podcast. Yeah, pop up on people's podcast. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, you want me to pop up on your podcast? Yeah. Contact her and Miss B. I'll pop up. She was great the whole time. Even when you look at the chicken head. Is that the chicken head? Yeah, but I don't really know how to do the chicken head. So what's your chicken head? I don't understand how you don't know how to do the chicken head. Okay. What side do you want to sit on? Okay, I'm going to sit here. Okay. I lived in Jersey for a couple of years, like, you know, during the pandemic and stuff. And then um, I moved to Tennessee, yeah. You and drove? No, I flew. So you flew, so you could take everything with you? I threw everything out that I had in my Jersey apartment, and I went to Tennessee with two suitcases. And that's it. It was awesome. I'm just a bitch. Bitch, bitch. You think you're the bomb. Yes, I'm a grandma. Yes, I'm more like Bhutan. Yes.
Hey, go hey. So I took day out to eat to this cute restaurant in Brooklyn. Um, it's called Skywise Lounge, located in Sheepshed Bay. And if you know anything about Sheepshed Bay, then you know it's on the water. So this restaurant is located on the water, y'all. We went on a Monday, but I'm sure this cute strip gets busy on the weekends, y'all. It was so romantic. The ambiance of this restaurant was beautiful. Yeah. Now the food wasn't nasty, but of course it wasn't the best food that I've ever had before. What type of sauce is this? I don't know, girl. I would be lying if I told you. I don't know. Don't pour all of it on it. Just put a little bit on it. Yeah, but you think I like it? I don't know. Try it, girl. Rate it from a one to ten. Because of the texture on the outside, I want it to be a little more crispy. Okay. Yeah, like crunchy. I would give it a six. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I would come back to this restaurant. You want to know why? Because the employees were freaking amazing, y'all. The customer service was intense since we stepped into the door. Definitely check this spot out if you're looking for a place to celebrate your birthday or go on a romantic date. Skywise Lounge, Brooklyn. Hey, go, hey. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Hey go hey, it's me, Miss Tiffany B. I am in my lowest form. Um I didn't even want to come on to this camera and lie to you guys and try to even get myself together in the slightest form. So the last time you seen me, I was in New York. I'm back in Nashville. What had happened was I went out with Day, right? Went out with Day, we went out to eat, and then we ended up going to a bar afterwards. I take the first flight out in the morning, so by the time we were done with the ball and I dropped Day home and I went back home, I was like, fuck it, I might as well just pull an all-nighter. So I did not fall asleep until I got back to Nashville after I put some food in my stomach and let me tell you something. When I did that shit, girl, I slept for 12 hours. I didn't wake up until 11 p.m. I had hella missed calls, hella text messages. I'm like, whoa, bro, 11 p.m.? I slept motherfucking good. Um, but I was also super drained from the night before because I didn't get sleep before that. And then the night before that, I didn't get much sleep either. And I just haven't been getting much sleep because um, remember, I worked, so I pulled an all-nighter and went to the airport. And you want to know what I was thinking? I'm, I'm just like, I'm not a hustler no more, okay? I'm not a hustler no more. I don't want to hustle. It's not good for me. I just realized I'm not, that, that's not the type of energy that I want to put out there. I don't want to have to feel like I'm putting my body through hell, my mind through hell, just to make money, this and the third. Like, I was going to go back to work, um... So I came back two days ago. I was going to go back on the day that I flew in because I haven't really worked in June. Um, but I was exhausted. I obviously didn't wake up till 11 p.m. And then I was going to go back today. But I have a YouTube video that I need to edit and get out there. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this shit handled first. I'm not even feeling 100% up to par. Like I haven't been to the gym in a few days. I just cooked the meal today, so I'm eating my home-cooked meals right now. You know, I need to get my body back into homeostasis, bitch. Like, I need to get my shit balanced. And when I went to work for the first time the other day, I was like, damn, you want to know what? I feel refreshed. Like, I feel really good. I was performing really good. I was having really good conversations with customers because I wasn't burnt out. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a hustler no more. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna focus on getting my body together again. 
so that I can go back to the club, you know, in good shape tomorrow.